Thank you very much, Leslie. Um, I think Dan uh, Anderson gave a good overview of um, the air quality situation. And what I will do in this study, in this presentation is talk about our specific project, windbreak wall vegetative strip system to reduce pollutant emissions from fan ventilated livestock barns. Uh, I list Ali Ajami, my PhD student, who did a lot of the data collection and who also did all of the instrumentation design. So uh, let me get started. So a little bit of background. Obviously, livestock barns emit many pollutants, ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, particulate matter. For reference, a finishing barn with a thousand pigs could emit three tons of ammonia and 200 pounds of uh, fine PM or PM10 annually. So uh, obviously pollutants emitted affect the environment, public health and quality of life. But in North Carolina, we have some specific serious issues that have the potential to affect the sustainability of livestock production. There have been uh, two major awards against a major swine integrators uh, against a major swine integrator, and these were made to uh, plaintiffs who lived next to pig houses. And there are more North Carolina lawsuits in the courts. I don't know about the situation in other states. Uh, poultry odor complaints are also increasing. We have a moratorium on swine production in the state since 1998, I think. So our live weights haven't changed much but there's been an increase in poultry production, particularly broiler. And so because of that, we see more complaints. Um, so obviously this is a summary of mitigation approaches. You have pre-excretion where you modify diet. Uh, that's a good way to do that. Only that sometimes uh, uh, diets can be expensive or they can have yield penalties. Then you have pre-release, meaning you apply some um, amendment to the waste, say for example, a certification or oxidizers, and that can cut down on uh, uh, production of um, pollutants. The third one is pre-emissions, uh, for example, oil spray that's very popular or quite popular in the Midwest. It's not something that's done in North Carolina. Finally, we have uh, post emission or exhaust air treatment. Dan talked about two of those methods and I'm going to talk about another one. So this was where we were focused on. So all emission, uh, all mitigation approaches have advantages and disadvantages. Um, we may have to sometimes consider multiple approaches, including post emission approaches. There are several industrial exhaust air treatment systems uh, but they, they are expensive and they impose unacceptably high pressure drops. And so if you install one of these systems, then you might as well have to consider removing all of your uh, propeller fans and install uh, tube axial or vein axial fans. So that's, that's a big expense, which I don't think uh, many producers will accept or any producer might accept. So we do have some promising exhaust air treatment systems for U.S. barns. I say U.S. barns because our barns are defined, uh, designed and operated, uh, designed differently than European barns where you might exhaust all of your air through a plenum and so you might be able to divert it through um, a scrubber system in the U.S. Uh, with cross-ventilated barns or with tunnel-ventilated barns, that is more of a challenge. So among the methods that you can use is you have uh, a vegetative environmental buffers, or you can have the bio curtain with or without electrostatic precipitation. Dan talked about that. And of course, what we also need to remember is that um, the key to reducing odor emissions as well as gas emissions from barns is to try and reduce PM emissions because a lot of the odorous gases as well as microbes can be absorbed onto the particulate matter. And at the bottom of the, uh, and, uh, and we do need to consider the fact that we have to have a system that 
causes very little or acceptable um, pressure increase. So we thought about this windbreak wall vegetative strip system. So windbreak walls are already in use to some extent or vegetative filter breaks are already in use, but you can't deploy them very close to the barn because obviously they'll start growing and then they come very close to the barn, they can uh, affect the fans and they also impose management costs. So we thought about this porous uh, fabric uh, enclosure, uh, we call it the engineered windbreak wall and the porous fabric traps dust and you have uh, an opening at the bottom and you can have some of the dust as well as the air come out and there you provide a vegetative strip or screen. Uh, this system as you can see is relatively low cost. It can be built on the farm with uh, uh, on-farm resources and as you can see the distance of the uh, fabric in front of the fan from the fan plane is about two diameters. We did do a lot of modeling work on this to come up with this design. So let me get to the objectives. Uh, overall, we wanted to evaluate the effectiveness of this system, vegetative uh, engineered windbreak wall, vegetative strip for uh, reducing emissions from ventilated livestock barns. So we did, did, uh, we did design and fabrication Design was uh, done with uh, computational fluid dynamics software. And then we did uh, measurements both in a swine barn as well as in a layer barn. My emphasis in this presentation is going to be on the swine barn because that turned out to be a lot easier than the layer barn. So if you look at the design and fabrication part, we model three different shapes. This is the box shape. We also had uh, a chamfer shape. We also had a curved shape. And then we uh, modeled three different footprint sizes. So two fan diameters, two and a half fan diameters, three fan diameters. And we also considered whether to have an opening at the bottom or not. And so we selected a low cost design Oh, by the way, when we considered the modeling part, we also looked at many different fabrics, uh, including something similar to what Dan uh, uh, used in his uh, electrostatic precipitation system. Um, so we also considered, uh, considered a cheap mosquito screen. So based on all of this modeling, we selected a low cost design, two fan diameters length with mosquito screen that you can buy from Lowe's or Home Depot. And it gave an acceptable pressure increase of less than 0 0.05 inches of static pressure. So that was uh, very important for us. So here's a system, uh, it's made out of uh, dimension lumber and mosquito screen. Uh, it's been operating since July, 2016. It's self-cleaning with rain. So what happens is, uh, Initially, the screen in front starts to plug with dust. And when that happens, uh, you start having more airflow rate from the fans going out through the top and through the sides. Usually when the screen is very clean, you have more of the exhaust leaving through the front. And in fact, you have fresh air coming in through the top, close to the building, entrainment. Uh, but once it starts to get dirty, uh, the trend changes and you start having more of the exhaust air leaving through the top. And so it gives you a large surface area to trap particulate matter. And with rain, it cleans out pretty well. And we saw pressure increases of less than 0 0.05 inches. I don't think we ever saw pressure increase of more than 0 0.05 inches for sustained periods, I think the pressure increase was no more than 0 0.03 inches. You also see, see switchgrass in front and the switchgrass screens the opening at the bottom. It does go dormant in winter, which is a challenge. And we tried two different uh, cultivars, Alamo and Shenandoah, and Alamo did a lot better. And on that picture, you also see some gas sampling manifolds that we installed. 
to look at how much was treated by the air coming out through the vegetative screen, how much was uh, treated by the air coming out of the uh, mosquito screen. And we also measured uh, inside uh, gas concentrations. So for evaluation, we used, uh, we looked at ammonia and hydrogen sulfide. So uh, for ammonia, we used time averaged concentrations uh, with boric acid scrubbers. With hydrogen sulfide, we look at, uh, looked at zinc acetate scrubbers. So you see our enclosure there. We have a bunch of scrubbers that uh, sample different manifolds on the outside as well as the inside conditions. And this is all controlled with the Raspberry Pi. Uh, we make sure that when there is ambient wind blowing against the screen, we stop sampling because the manifold is just outside of the screen and we didn't want to uh, get a diluted um, gas concentrated coming out of the outside. So as soon as the wind changed directions and it was against the screen and we had a protocol for that, uh, the samplers were shut down and then they would start up again when the wind direction uh, and speed changed. For total suspended particulates, uh, we used the optical sample in a grid pattern alongside airspeed. So we divided the whole screen into a series of uh, grids and we would measure airspeed using an ultrasonic 3D anemometer as well as the optical sample. Prior to that, we had also used um, the Texas a and um, low volume TSP sampler, but obviously with that, you can only deploy it at a single point on the outside or the inside. With this, you can try and capture the variability arising from different PM deposition rates on different portions of the screen. So uh, we did calibrate our optical sampler. This is a Microdust Pro with, uh, with the TSP sampler. And so we did change the concentrations based on a calibration coefficients. We looked at volatile organic compounds as well. As well. We collected them in Tedler bags and then analyzed them on a GCMS. For order, what we did was we used dilution to threshold using a nasal ranger. Uh, this was uh, the picture that you see on your right is uh, from a layer barn in Salisbury. And you can see that the screen's pretty dirty and, uh, and you see Greg Zwicky, who's also on this uh, webinar today, um, taking the samples. We also looked at uh, uptake of nutrients by the vegetation as well as interception by the vegetation. We also looked at the increase in um, concentration of the nutrients, nitrogen and sulfur inside the systems over time. So if you look at the swine system gas results, VOC and sulfur concentrations were very low. Uh, uh, people from the Midwest might be surprised about that, but um, in our shallow pit systems that we have, we don't have as much hydrogen sulfide and our VOCs were also low. I was really surprised. We tried analyzing a sam samples on different machines using different uh, GCMS protocols, but didn't work. Average ammonia removal was modest. So you can see that we have presented data for uh, five events. These are uh, three or four day events. And you can see that uh, the red bars are the inlet and the blue bars are the outlet. And you see emissions in kilograms per day uh, on the uh, y -ax primary y axis and the reduction efficiency on the primary, uh, sorry, secondary y axis. Uh, and ammonia removal was reduced at higher concentrations. What may be happening is that obviously the dust does, uh, does hold some of the ammonia in it. And so with uh, high ammonia concentrations, obviously you had lower removal. Now, if you look at the total suspended particulates, the average uh, total suspended particulate removal was 28%. Uh, TSP removal obviously was higher with the dirtier screen. So I have data for three days um, and you can see I did not include the screen porosity on that, but when the screen porosity was low because of dust accumulation, 
your um, uh, removal efficiency was higher. And this is what happened on October 3rd. This was after Florence, the hurricane that hit us pretty hard. And you can on the right see a, a close up view of um, the screen. Uh, my graduate student, what he did was every time he took measurements of uh, TSP and um, wind speed or airspeed on at each one of these grids, he also took um, uh, high resolution digital images and then he did an image analysis on each of these grid points to try and correlate removal of TSP based on the airspeed as well as the porosity of the system. So obviously if you have a more clogged screen, it is more effective in trapping dust. So if you look at the swine system odor results, again, we use the nasal ranger. We looked at uh, dilution to threshold, volumes of clean air per volume of odorous air that can be detected by a panelist. We would always have two panelists and we would average the values. We measured um, dilution to threshold uh, at five meters as well as 10 meters. We saw reductions at both, but I presented the data at 10 meters. So for the or dilution to threshold, what we would do is uh, the house that we did the uh, monitoring on had five fans, three fans on one side, two fans on the other side divided by the alley in the middle. And so to look at control concentrations, we would turn off the, the three fans uh, that were encapsulated by the windbreak wall and measure the, the dilution to threshold in front of the fans that were not covered at 10 meters. And then we would go ahead and measure the concentrations uh, in front of the windbreak wall system. And so as you can see over here, uh, on the x-axis, I have the dates and on the y-axis, primary, I have the dilution to threshold and then the reduction. So, and you also see the screen porosity. So as you can see, when you had low screen porosity, you had virtually no removal. And when the screen porosity, uh, I'm sorry, the screen porosity is low. In fact, I'm not sure why uh, you would expect to see higher removal, but we did not. But over here with 46% screen porosity, so less plugging, we did see uh, substantial removal. Again, we saw removals, um, uh, considerable removals on October 5th as well as October 17th. So obviously some of these things um, uh, involve a lot of uh, uncertainty in this, but to reduce the uncertainty, what we would do is uh, my graduate student, and sometimes I would go along, we would uh, start monitoring as soon as we could see early in the morning. And those are the conditions when you have inversion conditions with the ground, uh, uh, the air close to the ground being very heavy. And so you didn't have any air uh, winds, uh, ambient wind at that time. And we would try and finish all of that very early in the morning. Again, we had to do that during the warmer part of uh, uh, the, uh, the year, because if you try to do it during the cooler part of the year with all of the fans running, or maybe three of the fans running, you could chill the pigs. And so we were, we, we had to work with this uh, um, constraint or within this constraint. So I would say that uh, dilution to threshold, based on the dilution to threshold, the system seems to be quite effective, though variable. And again, dirtier screen, reduced orders. So let's talk about, um, uh, vegetation and uh, soil results. So the test switchgrass that you had in front of the system uh, had 259% higher nitrogen and 49% higher sulfur than the control switchgrass um, that was some distance away. It did not see any direct uh, exhaust from the houses. Uh, this is over 15 months. Uh, we did see that the vegetation intercepted uh, quite a bit of um, uh, total suspended particulates, nitrogen, as well as sulfate. We have results for that. Uh, if my memory serves me right, uh, uh, vegetation interception was probably about one to 2% on the, 
of the dry weight of the vegetation that we sampled. And over 10 months, the soil inside the system uh, had 132% more nitrogen, but 17% lower ammonium. So what that means is that there was nitrification going on um, in the area inside the uh, windbreak wall. So obviously, uh, we don't have a lot of nitrate emissions in the dust or nitrate bound to the dust coming out. It's mostly, I would say, ammonium and maybe some urea, but in this case, uh, on the ground, we did see an increase in nitrate concentrations. We also found more sulfur accumulation, which was encouraging, even though we could not detect sulfur concentrations with the zinc acetate scrubbers. Now, let me talk uh, briefly about the layer system. Uh, we had to test several designs, and that had to do with the fact that um, clogging with the chicken down caused major problems. Uh, the fine feathers beneath the exterior big feathers, uh, I mean, these are released in large quantities and these have actually, uh, these coat the uh, screen very well. And so that's why we had to go ahead and uh, try several designs. And with the layer house system, we also had a lot of problems because of disease outbreaks we were turned away from commercial farms, and so NRC has finally allowed us to do this study on a government farm, uh, NCDA, North Carolina Department of Agriculture's farm. And of course, we did this study on one layer house, and unfortunately, the layers had to be depopulated, so we had to move. So if you look at the three designs, you see a plain design where the screen is flat, uh, and then you see the pleated design where we increased the uh, screen surface area by 50% only on the front screen. And you see an opening at the bottom. During sampling, we always close the opening uh, on the door. But yes, it did have an opening that was screened by switchgrass. We also tried a tarp design with switchgrass, uh, but we were not happy with that. Obviously, during sampling, what we would do is we would pull up the side skirts so that there wouldn't be any short circuiting of air coming out, uh, moving out in between uh, the system, uh, between the structure and the switchgrass. We were careful about doing all that. So we finally settled on this layer design, layer, uh, layer system design. As you can see, it's a bigger design. So this one is a typical chamfer design. And we selected this chamfer design with a slope side so that rainfall would be more effective in cleaning uh, the front screen. And so you can see that it's got a bigger footprint. Uh, I don't think it's taller than the other one that we had. Uh, over here, you see that the vegetation is still being established. Uh, but this design with the vegetation high up and um, uh, with no short circuiting in between the screen and the vegetation, uh, we did see that we were able to reduce static pressure to something more acceptable. Uh, TSP removal in this case was substantial, 41%. Ammonia removal was still 16%, similar to what we had in the pig house. Uh, dilution to threshold reduction or odor reduction was 79% at 10 meters. So this was similar to what we saw with the uh, pig house, and th uh, these, these are average values based on multiple measurements. The soil inside the system had 22% higher nitrogen in three months. So we sampled the soil before we built the system, and then we sampled it after we built the system. So it wasn't, so the soil should have received uh, nitrogen deposition over time. And we did see vegetation uh, intercepting total suspended solids, nitrogen, and sulfur. And we are looking at all of that data and my graduate student is writing it up to defend his uh, dissertation. So in conclusion, here are some of the things I would like to say. It seems to be suitable for uh, treating swine barn exhaust. It's compact, it's low cost, it's self-cleaning, and it's retrofitable. I mean, if you have houses that are not too far apart, or if you have the alley making a turn in front of the house, you can still fit it in. It's also modular. You might, you could do it for one fan or you could do it for 10 fans. So it's, it's, it's quite simple. 
Uh, suitable switchgrass cultiv uh, cultivar selection is still important. We did consult um, an article by Belt, who is from the USDA, and we did select switchgrass based on that. Uh, we found that odor reduction was substantial. TSP reductions were variable and modest, and they depend on how dirty or clean the screen is. Ammonia reductions were small. And we did see evidence of enrichment of nitrogen and sulfur in the vegetation, as well as the soil inside the system. And doing a mass balance is very difficult. And it's also made difficult by the fact that you have a lot of variability on the screen itself. And then you have air being sucked in, fresh air being sucked in into the system due to entrainment. So with that, I'd, be, uh, I'd like to acknowledge my um, 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 sponsors as well as my co-PIs. USDA NRC has funded this project. Uh, we had uh, Ling Juan Wang Li, Kohler, Castillo, Stike Leather. And we did our study in Lillington, North Carolina at Butler Farms and Piedmont Research Station in Salisbury was the one that did the help, uh, um, helped us install the system at the layer house. We had support from the department as well as the university. So I'm at the end of my presentation. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns.